hope that you are all well. And for those of you who are new here, my name is Elfidia and I'm a front-end developer. Welcome to this video and welcome to a left desk code. In this video and in this series of videos, um, I'm answering your questions. And in this video, we are going to have some very, very interesting questions from you guys. If you want to participate, you can leave a comment below or you can go to the community tab of my YouTube channel and ask your question there. And also via Twitter, you can use the hashtag code to leave your question and I will do my best to answer it. I don't claim that I know everything, but I'm very willing to do a research and give you an honest answer. So before we start with this video, I would like to remind you to please like this video, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. It means a lot and for you it's free. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. So, in this video we are going to answer some questions that are general about coding but we are also going to talk about something else that I don't think that I have ever talked about which is donations. So let's start with the questions and I've written everything here so I don't forget anything and I will start from a question which is asked by your heel. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong and it says should I add my pre-code code projects to my portfolio? So for those of you who don't know FreeCodeCamp, FreeCodeCam is a free source to learn coding and it has some amazing projects. So to answer your question, yes, I do think that you should add your FreeCodeCam projects to your portfolio. In my personal portfolio, I also have these projects uploaded and I also have them into my GitHub. So I think that it's really great to upload them and later if you're looking or if you're searching for a job, you can reference to them to a hiring manager or somebody else that it's interested to you. Let's go to the next question, uh, which says, can you talk a little bit about your challenges? How did you like them? Which one was the, your favorite? Uh, from which one you've learned the most? And um, this question is asked by JK. And I think that he's referring to, to all the challenges that I completed some weeks ago. And if you're not familiar with it, I will have a photo somewhere here. So I did the 100 days of code, 301 days of code, uh, daily CSS images, and a lot of other challenges. I'm not going to talk a lot about that because in my previous video, which you can find down in the description, I talked quite a lot about it. So um, a very quick answer here. I did like all the challenges. I don't have a favorite one, but I think that uh, 100 days of code is like most in my heart because it's the start, it's from where I started. And that's the one that I do prefer. But of course, like with every challenge, my goal is different. For example, with 100 days of code, my goal was to be better at coding and also building a portfolio. Whereas, for example, with the 301 days of code, my goal was more focused on studying because that was the time that I started doing my master's. And if you're not familiar with it, I'm doing a master's in graphical arts and multimedia. So that's when I was more focused in design and design projects and like other challenges like daily CSS images are more focused on CSS so I was interested in also learning CSS and that's why it took this challenge. So to sum up I don't have a favorite challenge I do like all the challenges but I would suggest you to pick one stick to it and do the best that you can do. Okay, let's continue with another question and it is from Lemuel and it says, what made you start coding? Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, I started coding when I was 18 years old and I did go to a university. Um, I'm an engineer in informatics and telecommunications, so the university was informatics and telecommunications of engineering. Yes, I know, big name, and it was actually a polytechnical school, which means it is five years, not four, not three, not two, but five years. And usually the fifth one is like a master. So you can also say that you have a master's. Anyway, so at that university, I did a lot of maths, a lot of physics, a lot of network stuff, a lot of telecommunications 
stuff but of course i also did a lot of things about coding i did only like the basic things and we tried to cover a little bit of everything so a little bit of back end a little bit of front end and like the most basic things that you can think of like a little bit of java c c plus plus and then from the other hand javascript uh css and html but all the very very basics i enjoy building things and i still enjoy that and i enjoy more of having a visual or something visual to look at and that's why i prefer front-end development and when i started building like small projects and stuff i realized that i really like that and i really wanted to pursue it as my career so that's how i started to code Let's continue with the next question, which says, what challenges did you find more challenging in doing this? So I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, I guess that, again, it refers to, to my previous video or to the, to the image that you can see again right here. And yeah, every challenge is challenging. And if it wasn't challenging, it wouldn't be a challenge. So I'm not going to give you a straight answer here, but again, I would say that pick up a challenge that is challenging because if something is easy for you, then it's not a challenge. So for me, I guess every challenge was challenging. And if it wasn't very challenging, I would do it like a bit more challenging. For example, if I know something already in CSS, I'm not going to build the exact same thing because I've already done that. I will try to challenge myself a little bit more to find something a little bit more challenging and instead build that. Okay, now let's go to the second part. Uh, this question is coming from Jasmine and it says, what can we do to help people in need of computer or laptops in order to start learning to code? Is there any resource out there we can contribute to organizations we can donate? So I did some research before I answer this question and I found quite a few organizations that you can donate. I'm not going to mention everything because then I I'm afraid that I will forget some very interested ones where I maybe even don't know some interested one and that worth your money. So I'm not going to, to say like donate there or there or there. But one of my favorite <laughs> like place to donate money is of course Freecode.com. And this is because I know the amazing job and the hard work that goes behind this project. So again, I'm not saying that you should totally give your money there, but I will leave the description and if you want, you can check it out by yourself, maybe donate there. Now, I will also leave in the description a very cool video that I found and it is from a guy that is giving MacBooks to students that are in need of MacBooks. If you can do that, then this is great. Just find students, go to libraries, to universities, to colleges and find students that they don't have um, a, a PC or a laptop or a MacBook. And like then you can give them your own or you can buy them something. I don't know. I think that this is something very helpful, but of course you're going to need a lot of money to do so. Another thing is that you can go to libraries and donate there instead of its student and donate there either some money or some equipment. Or a third way, which is not very difficult to be like financially, um, it is again go to libraries and ask them to be open 24 hours instead of only some hours per day and this will also help the students to go there and study more so if they don't have um, a laptop home they can do their exercises at the library i think that this is a really cool way and also an inexpensive one as for uh like donations again you can do it to each developer if you do like a developer you can google them you can find their website you can find their twitter and sometimes some developers do have like a small button in their website that says donation or donating so you can go straight ahead and donate there and uh, a little bit of a disclaimer here 
I also have a link, I will leave it uh, right here, that you can also donate whatever you wish to donate. Um, anyway, but again, some other people have like Patreon's account and you can donate directly to them. And there are a lot of, a lot of cool ways to donate. So I'm not going to talk a lot about this topic, but as a conclusion, if you are searching for organization, I would say pre code combat, of course, do your own research. And then if you want to help students, I would say go to libraries and other donate there or directly to students. And if you wanted to help developers, then search for them, search their name, and most probably you will find their website or their Twitter or something like that. And again, you can directly uh, give your money to those people. Alright guys, that was the questions for this video. I hope that you liked it and you find it interesting. Don't forget to leave a question down below and I'll make sure to answer it in the next video. And also please like, share and subscribe this video. Have an amazing day and see you really soon. Bye!